There are a lot of difficult parts to being a marine biologist. You know, as humans and land mammals, we weren't really designed to be out there in the water and in the sea. So if we're wanting to study and observe the animals of the ocean, it means doing things that we weren't really designed to do. For example, it means going out in a boat onto the ocean, which for me often means getting seasick. I know, a marine biologist who gets seasick, it's like the biggest cosmic joke of my life, but anyway. Uh, oftentimes it means we have to get in the water, so it means either learning how to hold your breath for a really long time or learning how to scuba dive and spending short bursts of time underwater. And again, usually for me this means getting freezing cold because I'm a sucker when it comes to cold water and we just, we don't have the blubber and the things necessary to spend lots of time in the water. Or it means we're on the beach and we're getting baked by the sun and sunburns and all of this is just to say that fieldwork as a marine biologist is a lot of fun but it's not for the faint of heart and then even when we're back on land in our normal territory there's the endless computer tasks of analyzing your data and coding your stats and writing and ethics issues and permits and funding applications and there's a lot that goes on into being a marine biologist but it's a job that I love I'm passionate about it it's something I've wanted to do ever since I can remember so it's not something I would give up or would I? And now we're at one of my favorite places in Plett, the Keerwebs Estuary. I must say, I have been very lucky over the past four years or so. I was one of those weird people who managed to get a job during the most intense part of COVID. I uh, got a job as a postdoctoral research fellow working as a researcher, short-term contract for Government Research Institute here in South Africa. And through this research contract, I've been analyzing some pre-existing data on uh, stingray movements here in South Africa. So seeing where they move, what kinds of habitats are important for them. I've also developed my own little fieldwork project here on this beautiful estuary behind me. I have spoken about it before on this channel, but it's been a really nice mix of both fieldwork as well as all of those computer tasks that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. And I've been really proud of this project that I have on the estuary here. It's been way more successful than I could have possibly imagined at the beginning and we've shown that this is a really important habitat to a critically endangered stingray species so we're actually moving on with this research um, this year going forward we're implementing a tagging project where we're putting little external tags on the stingrays to see how many individuals they are, how far they move up and down the system, how long they stay here. So this is really going to start to answer more in-depth questions about, you know, why they're using this habitat and how important it is to them, which has really big conservation, you know, potential outcomes. So it's something I'm really, really excited about for this year. But there is just a little bump in the road, um, that being <laughs> that my research contract comes to an end at the end of April, which basically means after that, I'm not gonna have a job anymore. What does that mean for me in terms of 2024? 
I really don't know. Trying to find a job as a marine biologist is hard enough. Trying to find a job as a marine biologist in a small town is basically impossible. And I really don't want to leave this place. I mean, look at it, it's here behind me. It's this gloriously beautiful small town. It's got oceans, it's got mountains, it's got forests, hiking trails, stingrays, all kinds of outdoorsy things. And I just love living in a small town. I love the relatively stress-free environment as opposed to the hustle and bustle of the city. And I, I love the community aspect of living in a small town. So I really don't want to leave. So at the moment, I'm not really looking for jobs in the city. I'm kind of just gonna see what happens here. I have a few different options that will hopefully come to fruition. I'll probably do some part-time work with a local NGO in the area and carry on with my stingray research. I have a little entrepreneurial project on the side that I've just started and I have you guys here on YouTube. So a huge thank you for watching these videos and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Another aspect of my life here that I've become utterly obsessed with is this here garden. This garden has the most incredibly established trees that bring all kinds of bird life to it and I have seriously been practicing my green thumb. I've been growing veggies, herbs, flowers, you name it and we have so many cool insects and birds and moths and butterflies and toads and frogs and all kinds of things. So this garden has really become my sliver of peace in amongst all the things associated with being a marine biologist and the stress of just not knowing what's going to happen this year. Today we're harvesting some spinach. These guys have been growing here for a while and they're kind of past their best. So we're taking them out and I'm going to be putting some broccoli and some dill in here. I'm very excited. I haven't grown broccoli before, so we're going to see how it goes. But this spinach was just incredible. One really good piece of news for this year, though. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited. I've been invited to do some field work with Moat Marine Labs and Aquariums, which is like a really world-class marine biology institution based in Florida in the States. Um, and every year they do work on um, white spotted eagle rays. And so I'm going to join them for a month in April and go help out there, which I am so excited for working with a world-class scientist at a world-class institution on a species that I've wanted to see like my whole career. It's going to be epic. Just look at all this glorious spinach. So to conclude, apart from wrapping up my work contracts in April and spending the month in America doing that amazing field work, I don't really know what this year has in store for me. I kind of just have to trust the process and hope something will work out, but we'll wait and see. Either way, I'm still going to be around making content for you guys, taking you on this journey with me. So if you're enjoying the videos, please hit the subscribe button, support the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.